Welcome aboard the News Review. We'll be going into the papers uh, shortly, but let me get this out of the way, yeah? Uh, we wish, and who are the we, you'll find out shortly, Professor Paul Kwame Nyame, Chairman of the 10th Board of the Medical and Dental Council, a glorious 82nd birthday. So your outfit is celebrating you for your integrity, dedication to duty, service with humility, sense of patriotism, commitment to discipline, fairness, and respect for the ordinary person, and more. On this auspicious occasion, the registrar and management of the council join others to thank God for your life and selfless service to our beloved country, humanity, and the profession. You are deeply appreciated. So, happy 82nd birthday to you, Professor Paul Kwame Nyame, Chairman uh, of the 10th Board of the Medical and Dental Council. Now that we've cleared that, I think it's only fitting to say as well, if you're celebrating your birthday out there, happy birthday to you. God bless. The Daily Graphic this morning, Ashanti Region NPP polls, Wunt to me faces stiff contest, and that is a question. Of course, today we are hosting a general secretary uh, hopeful, one hoping to unseat John Buedu, Charles Bissu, if you recall. And uh, he already has a secretaryship position in the Western region, but he's looking at the national level now. Look forward to that conversation. But let's get into the story. It's on page 13 of the Daily Graphic newspaper. All right, so we have it here. The contest for the Ashanti Regional Chairmanship of the MPP is gaining momentum with the vetting of the five aspiring candidates. And haven't we heard from some interesting personalities? Now, although there are other positions at stake in the upcoming Regional Delegates Conference, the one that is being fiercely contested is the Regional Chairmanship, which has five party stalwarts battling it out in a who is who affair. Yesterday, vetting of the candidates commenced with the five aspiring regional chairpersons. They are the incumbent Bernard Infibuesiako, popularly known as Chairman Wuntumi, who is gunning for a third term, uh, a former Ifija Kwabre South constituency chairman, Odenehu Kwekwapia, also known as Chairman Odenehu Kwekwapia, uh, that is Koka. Uh, then a former member of parliament for Ejiso Kwabuno Usu Eduomi, and a former Asokwa constituency chairperson, Robert Asari Bidiako, popularly known as uh, Chairman Asari Bidiako, and Oheneba Kofi Edumbewa. What's it with all of these AKAs? Anyway, so that is that. And uh, we've heard from some of them saying that Chairman Wuntumi in Chibuesiako has not done the party, uh, you know, he's, he's done the party a disservice in many ways, and that he must step aside. Only time will tell how that pans out in the Ashanti region and whether maintaining or booting him out will affect the fortunes of the party in terms of the number of votes they get in their World Bank, that region. Achimota Forest Bruhaha, compensation informed declassification. That's according to Deputy Minister Benito Owusu Bio. Let's check out some more details of that, also on page 13. And the government has explained that the high amount of monetary compensation needed for land influenced the decision to return the peripherals of the Achimota Forest to the Owu family, the allodial owners of the, uh, the land. You know, there are different forms of land titles uh, as far as the land law is concerned. The, the other day, um, Mr. Jan, uh, you know, uh, the authority, one of the authorities when it comes to land law in Ghana, expatiated uh, on this matter. The Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources in charge of lands and forestry, Benito Wusubio, who made the clarification, said the return of the peripheral portions of the Achimota Forest to the original owners in lieu of compensation was right because on humanitarian grounds, the Owu family deserves something. So 4,000 uh, pounds, uh, what would that be worth in today's money though? It would be interesting to check. I could do that because they are converters, but 4,000 pounds in the 1920s thereabouts and uh, here we are with the peripherals being handed over to them. The interesting bit is moving from 90 plus acres to 190 something, coming back to uh, uh, 90, 118 thereabouts, and now over 300. What exactly has been happening? And that over 300 is about half, uh, you know, the entire patch. Well, are we being told the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Time, like I say, always exposes. What is true, what is fact, and what is fiction? Parks and gardens beautifies uh, roads, exercise extends to MMDAs, and uh, as we hear it, the Department of Parks and Gardens has started the beautification of road medians, shoulders, and roundabouts along selected principal streets in the regional capitals. 
The exercise, which began about two months ago, has already seen the planting of 25,000 seedlings of ornamental shrubs that produce various colors of flowers for beautification. The seedlings also include assorted bedding plants and grass that have the ability to prevent soil erosion. But this also brings to mind another interesting subject. Our parks and gardens, they are almost defunct, all of them. I don't know whether that is the appropriate word to use, but our parks and gardens are a pale shadow of what they were when we started you know, these projects many decades ago. In fact, per what we know, and I've engaged some of these groups in the past, land meant for parks and gardens over time. Politicians, our very politicians, NDC, NPP, have taken over some of these spots. And it is indeed a big problem because you look at when it rains in Accra and the things that happen in Accra, which is why there's been a lot of, uh, you know, a push as far as the Achimota Forest thing is concerned. Because you take that away, you, you change the developments there, and you could be exposing areas like Jowulu, Abelengpe, leading into the airport area to flooding. So we need these parks and gardens, and not to forget their recreational purposes. But over the years, we've, they've gone to the dogs. Some of them have even been taken over by politicians. We know that. We know that for a fact. So, well, positive developments here, but sometimes I look at these and wonder, for how long? Because we're a knee-jerk reacting country. Oh, yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, say, then giddy, 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 giddy. We're going to do a few things. After a few months, yeah, mutu. Let's check out some other stories in uh, the newspaper. Domahene commends President for Development Initiatives. Accra selected for Global Cities Fund for Migrants and Refugees. Taking a look at that number crunch, about 85 million Sub-Saharan Africans are expected to migrate by 2050 due to climate crisis. And that is where we get the brunt of things. Uh, because you look at the Western world and what they have contributed to uh, environmental pollution and now there are carbon pockets and you know all of these policies across the globe and we are now trying to industrialize and yet the situation seems to have changed because the dynamics the world over first of all being in, in the tropics if you like being uh, in the global south uh, we are faced with this situation where our temperatures are much higher and so the, uh, the, the, the temperate areas the global north they, they have industrialized, they have created quite a lot of pollution in the course of industrialization. And we are here, we are now trying to do it, but we are bearing the brunt of their actions. So to industrialize or not to industrialize. But I think if we keep, if we keep tabs on our forest reserves, if we do the right things. Look, the Achimota forest is like the Amazon in Accra. It is, it is the lungs of, of Accra. We breathe. A lot of what we get is owing to the oxygen produced by some of these areas that feed us. And if we do anything that is inimical to that, we would basically be shooting ourselves in the foot. Other stories that on the back page of the Daily Graphic, eight arrested for building on earthquake monitoring sites. Now, I just want you to take a quick look at that. We are sick as a country. I simply can't get it. Look, just look at that structure. I, I, I'm hoping we can put it back. L look at that. I mean, who constructs? Hey. <laughs> anyway, it's just recently that we're talking about the Weja area and some you know, developments there. But it appears people will simply not listen. We want to see disaster before we, we come to our senses. Now, the police have arrested eight persons caught putting up illegal structures at earthquake-prone areas in Accra. The area is located at Oblogo in the Wejagbawe municipality and Tuba in the Ghana South municipality in the Greater Accra region. Straddle the Ghana Geolog Ge Geological Survey Authority, that is the GGSA, earthquake monitoring station at Oblogo. The arrests were on the directive of the minister, Deputy Minister of Lands and Natural Resources in charge of mines, George Meku Duka. And George, we hope to see many more of these because there are many more people and all of those people building on waterways. It doesn't matter which party they're affiliated to, how much they've contributed to what. Raise those structures down. People will stop doing that. People will stop. Let's move on. Ghanaian Times newspaper now. Let's support Ghana Ivory Coast Cocoa Initiative. Cocoa bot, uh, boss 
lobbies African countries. And then government remains committed to protecting Achimota Forest. Benito Wusubio says so. President calls on investors, entrepreneurs to spearhead growth and development in West Africa. I'm going to do the story because it's one of the major stories. In fact, it's our first big story for today. So let's take a quick look at what the president has been saying. And um, President Nanadu Dankwe Kofuado has stressed the need for investors and entrepreneurs in West Africa to spearhead the growth and development of the region through cross-border business integration and partnerships. At a meeting with the new head of the UBA Bank Ghana, Chris Ofikulu, at the Jubilee House in Accra yesterday, the president said one of the surest ways of achieving accelerated growth on the region uh, was through business integration in the region. Uh, quoting him, he says, I am a very committed West African and ECOWAS person, and I believe very much that the integration and intercourse of our various businesses is the way to develop our region. He said, on the part of my government, we are here to support the private sector, indigenous as well as foreign. He said, noting that Nigerian businesses were always welcome in Ghana due to the symbiotic relationship between the two countries. And so those are some developments there. But a story we did yesterday uh, has made its way into the Ghanaian Times newspaper. That's on page 17. Three arrested for attacking, vandalizing Benya FM. And two more suspects have been arrested by the Central Regional Police Command for vandalizing an Elmina-based radio station, Benya FM. The suspects are Michelle Asabre, 25, and Anthony Eshen, 32 uh, years. Um, interesting, uh, because I think the name of the person affected is Blessing Eshen, unless I, I am missing something. And this is another Eshen who, is, who is, has also been taken in. The two suspects... Uh, together with another, Opari Akins, who was arrested earlier, subjected a host of the station to severe uh, beatings. Now, uh, let's hear what the police has to say on this. Confirming the arrest, uh, the Central Regional Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Irene Opong, explained that the suspects who went into hiding were arrested on Wednesday evening. She explained that Akins, who was arrested earlier, admitted the offences during interrogation and said he went to the station with two other suspects. More details of that story in the paper. On the back page, black maidens ready for young Atlas lionesses. And that's in sports. Ghana's black maidens will be in action today as they welcome the young Atlas lionesses of Morocco in the first leg final round of the qualifiers for the 2022 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup at the Accra Sports Stadium at 3 p.m. Now, whereas the Black Maidens uh, pursue a seventh appearance at the World Showpiece slated for India in October, the young Atlas Lionesses are chasing a ticket to make a maiden appearance. We wish our Black Maidens the very best. Let's move on from there as well. Republic Press uh, this morning. What are they pressing through? Failing to manage natural resources equally breed conflict. And that is the NDPC boss, Republic Press not NDCP, NDPC. Page four, let's look at this. And uh, he's someone I've been speaking to recently, so I want to find out what exactly he is saying in this respect. The Director General of the National Development Planning Commission, Dr. Kojo Isim uh, Abrampa, has said it is incumbent on Ghana to manage and equally distribute proceeds derived from natural resources in the country. According to him, that is the only way many Ghanaians who feel satisfied uh, and as they stand to benefit from long years of mining natural resources from their communities, towns, and cities. What exactly has he been saying? He says, sometimes I get worried when Ghanaians talk about gains from the petroleum sector being channeled to the free senior high school program. I think that is the most laudable venture because the free SHS is about the youth and the other future of the nation. He added that available data revealed further that from 2007 to 2013, the poverty level was reduced drastically, but same could not be said of the period from 2017 to 2022, as the reduction level has since been stalled. And uh, I guess this morning, as a youth of the country, if I qualify, because youthful age in different countries spans different things, though there's a global parameter per UN standards. But here's the bit. Young people in this country, especially when you talk about things like the e-levy and other forms of taxes, we wouldn't mind if we were seeing our resources being expended to our benefit. But look at all that we are sitting on. And yet we languish in penury 
poverty. It breaks my heart when I look at our streets, wherever you go. Yes, you can talk about the little ones, the street urchins from Niger and bordering countries, but our own Ghanaians are there too. I remember working in the Opebia area many years ago, and it used to break my heart because every time, sometimes I would look down from the fifth floor and you would see these children, they come in the gutter, you know, the big one facing uh, 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 Opebia, the, the Silver Star Towers. They bath there, they eat there, they hawk there for those who sell something, uh, they beg for arms there. What kind of life is that? And yet the law stipulates that the state should protect children. We have failed. We have completely failed in this regard. So let's ensure that our mineral resources are serving the people. But oh, come to think of it, look at the royalties we get. And again, mining uh, you know, a resource like gold in Ghana has been going on for decades, even in the colonial period for hundreds of years, yet this is a finite resource. We don't have an infinite store of gold. It is finite. Yeah, what are we doing with it? We've not been able to get to the point where we are even refining the gold, where we are processing the gold. So it leaves us, it goes to the United Arab Emirates, it goes to uh, Switzerland and other places. Look at Switzerland. It doesn't produce cocoa, does it? But it refines the product and sells it back to us. The nonsense of our mentality. I'm sorry when I use these words, or maybe I shouldn't be sorry, because we have failed generations past, we are failing our generations today, and in fact, we are failing the generations to come. And it is pathetic. How do we think? You have people who have trained in Ivy League institutions, the Oxbridge institutions, Oxford and Cambridge, and all of that. We sit on wealth, yet we are cloaked in poverty. And it makes no sense. No sense at all. Burkina Faso trapped miners, wives heartbroken but praying for miracles. Sometimes I get this passionate because it's just crazy in this country. Anyway, uh, let's look at some other stories. School bus driver gets life imprisonment for sexual assault on five-year-old pupil. Help reduce dependence on foreign aid ecofuado charges. But, Mr. President, it should be more than rhetoric. Uh, since we've been talking about Ghana beyond aid, Ghana beyond aid, no country is an island when it comes to aid. Not even the United States. They owe trillions. But what are they doing in terms of bettering the lives of their citizens? Look at the HDIs, Human Development Index. There I go again. Something else that doesn't make sense. So moving us beyond aid is more action rather than talk, Mr. President. Let's see more of that action. And then we can attribute some more seriousness to this. Bank of Ghana governor worry, uh, worries over rising inflation. And that is done and dusted, Republic Press newspaper. Let's look at some other newspapers now, uh, starting with the Daily Guide. Government will protect Achimota uh, Forest. And pictured here, some lions inside the Achimota uh, Forest. A lioness with her cubs, actually. Soldiers will crush terrorists, says minister. Now, this one is interesting. <laughs> Pardon me if I am laughing, but a very serious matter. But um, uh, they say when you, if you live in a glass house, you don't throw stones. Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, Deputy Defense Minister Kofi Amankwa Menu has given assurance that the country's security forces are on high alert against any terrorist activities. He has therefore urged the citizenry to go about their duties without any fear. The deputy minister disclosed that President Okufuado's administration had properly equipped the security agencies to defend citizens easily against any terrorist group. Let me just focus on easily. Mr. Deputy Minister, some of us have also been spreading the message so that everybody remains cautious. But please, don't paint the picture as though we were in fine position because we heard from your own outfit, you in particular, and you made mention of the fact that we are not in a good place that we are not in a good place when it comes to the, these terrorists and that we ought to be on high alert and all of that. So let's not paint the picture, especially as a country that has not seen any major terrorist attack. Burkina Faso has. In fact, there was a time when I was in Ouagadougou, I missed, thankfully, a terrorist attack by a whisker. I left a hotel there and not too long after, there's an enclave 
There are a lot of terrorist attacks there. The Ivory Coast has seen it. Mali has seen it. Neighboring Togo has seen it. Nigeria is replete with it. Let's not play with this. We don't have the experience. We may have a good military, but there are factors, economic factors, and so many more that we cannot play with. So as you try to reassure citizens, I get you, but let's not play the ostrich. And let's not act as though we would easily handle this, especially without any experience. Let's move on from there. Um, I goofed Kofi Bento. Uh, and let's check out that story. Did he really goof? Uh, Vice President of Think Tank Imani Africa, Kofi Bento, says his recent claim that the Achimota Forest Reserve had been sold by government originated from an unreliable source. Mr. Bento, who disclosed this when he was challenged by veteran journalist Kweku Baku Jr. about the veracity of the claim, has since beaten a retreat and even deleted the post from his Facebook page. Uh, I think this is a good move, at least per the rhetoric we've been fed with for now, that is not in the offing and the understanding that has come to us. I think it, it is also welcoming that when you make a mistake, you apologize. And Kofi Bento uh, beating a hasty retreat on that one is only right. Uh, maybe we would like to see him actually post uh, something saying that, look, um, I goofed. And uh, that is that. Let's check out the entertainment uh, page of the newspaper. KOD returns to Radio Gold. AJ Nelson drops new single. I'm considering vasectomy. That is Maria Carey's Nick Cannon. Okay, dude. You go right ahead. The 41-year-old who is expecting his ninth child with girlfriend uh, Brie Tiasi said this to E! News Daily uh, Pop. According to him, although he's blessed with the gifts of children and finds solace in them, he's not looking to populate the earth. After nine, dude, you have the right to your vasectomy. Enjoy. Wizkid to feature on Chris Brown's album. And uh, in other stories, Veep to headline CEOs as Summit and Senior Economist explains economic hardship. I'm talking about Professor Peter Quartey. On the back page, Kempong Travels is official agency, official agency for what? Uh, it has been named uh, a leading travel agency in the sports sector as the official travel agency for Ghana's campaign for Qatar 2022 World Cup. And Ghana, Egypt sports ministries strike deal. I'll be wrapping up shortly. Let's take a look at some more interesting headlines. The finder, Wana pledges support for Green Ghana projects. Ghana Police Service calls for calm at Nkaranza. And interestingly, yesterday, Dampare Must Go was trending on Twitter. Makes for interesting uh, reading. But uh, on the back of what he's done, I mean, Dampare has done things that we have not seen as far as the IGP's position is concerned. I remember as far back as Peter Namfuri, some of the good things that were done. But... In recent times, I, I have not seen any IGP do some of the things he has done. And I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. Of course, you cannot expect that by merely setting an example and doing the things he's doing and whipping people in line, it will just succeed. There are so many bad nuts in the Ghana Police Service. Go back and read some of the reports about things that the Ghana Police Service has done. It's not to say they are not good, by and large, fantastic, but some elements. And you know why that problem persists? It's because of the political elements, NDC, MPP. When they come, jobs for the boys and girls, criminals are getting into the service, so to speak. Yeah, it's not, it's not uh, I mean, it's, it's nothing that we can contest. It is the reality. I know somebody back then in a certain neighborhood. He got into the police service and we're all shocked because we knew who this person was. So Ghana Police Service, Uwe Juma Ebonapo. Um, so stop returning government acquired lands to original owners that's Occupy Ghana. They have had their own thoughts on this Achimota issue. $122 million DEK vaccines company for, for Ghana to produce 13 different vaccines for Ghana as well as export them. Kofi Nsian Poku is CEO of the DEK vaccines. Uh, quickly, the Daily Dispatch. It will be bloody if government brings a Japa deal to parliament. NDC's Nilante says so. And Rawlings wanted his cremated body ashes splashed at Achimota Forest. Anything to bring in the Achimota Forest, right? There's also the Daily Statesman 
Fake party cards rock NDC. Aspiring leaders employ tricks to outwit one another. The Chronicle newspaper, mobile money transactions hit 1 trillion Ghana cities up from 155 billion in 2017. And the Accra Times, my final newspaper, Mahama shows gratitude. My country has given me so much and urges NDC faithful to elect a winning flag bearer. And this is how we'll draw the curtains on uh, the news review. But let me just say one more time, uh, Professor Paul Kwame Nyame, chairman of the 10th board of the Medical and Dental Council, a glorious 82nd birthday to you, sir. On that note, I'm leaving you just for now. Uh, Burnish together with I will be back when we get into the big stories. But up next, sports. Stay.